This is For Your Reference, a sports reference podcast. Welcome back to For Your Reference, a sports reference podcast. My name is Charlotte. I'm on the data team at Sports Reference. And this podcast is where we get to share interesting topics and stories that we happen to come across while building the Sports Reference family of websites. I'm recording solo today with a topic that is interesting to me, and that is older college athletes. So the first thing I did was brush up just a little on the NCAA rules. There's no age limit for eligibility to play in college, but athletes have to comply with a few different rules. They have five years if they're playing a Division I sport um, to complete four seasons. And the clock starts ticking as soon as they enroll at their institution, whether or not they're actually playing their sport. Division two and Division three schools have just a little bit more flexibility. Instead of five years, they do 10 semesters, which typically 10 semesters would take five years, but they don't have to be consecutive. So a Division two or three player could take a year off and come back. Additionally, players can appeal to the NCAA to regain eligibility through a waiver or exception, and that could be for any number of reasons. Often an injury prevented them from playing a season, um, but they could petition for, for any number of reasons. And in the past few years, every student athlete in the country was granted sort of a mass exception Um, for having their seasons impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And that affected students whose seasons were in the spring of 2020 as well as throughout the 2021 school year. And at the Division III and junior college level, spring athletes were actually able to get two extra years of eligibility if their 2020 and 2021 seasons were impacted. Even with exceptions and extra years, you would still expect the vast majority of college athletes to be in their late teens and very early 20s. And when we have an outlier, that's often something I'll notice. We've done a number of data projects where I'll be going through birth dates and I'll see something that seems out of the ordinary and I'll kind of double check that. I mean, for example, just today, I was looking for the oldest players in our college database and I happened to find some who had a 1990 birth date and was active, which would make them 32 years old. But that was a mistake. Their birth date is actually 1999, so I was able to fix that little typo this morning. The really interesting cases that I want to talk about are the ones where it's not a typo. For example, we have Kyle Pugh in our college football database, and you look at his page and he has seven rows all at Northern Illinois. And you're thinking, is this really all one guy? He's still there? Yeah, he's an eight-year senior. Um, and that's because he had a freshman red shirt, which means he chose to sit out his freshman year. And then he had three different season-ending injuries plus his COVID red shirt. And you might be wondering what's he been doing his whole time there. He actually has already received a degree in kinesiology and a master's in sports management and is getting a second master's in sports psychology. And that is another NCAA requirement that student athletes do always need to be taking classes and what they call progressing towards a degree. So maybe I'll do a whole nother episode sometime about the fake classes or questionable classes that uh, college athletes have taken over the years, you know, from ballroom dancing to essay classes, Uh, but as long as they are earning credits that will get them towards a degree, not necessarily graduate, they don't have to graduate, but they have to be at least progressing towards a degree, um, they can stay in the athletic programs. And Kyle Pugh is really one of a handful of college football players who've been affected by the COVID bonus year. There was a pretty epic quote I came across from 24-year-old, six-year senior Tanner Morgan. He's a quarterback at Minnesota, and he started his college career with a full head of hair and now has none. And he was asked by a reporter why he chose to go with that hairstyle, and he said, it's pretty simple, really. I'm bald. So uh, thanks to the Wall Street Journal for that amazing quote. Um, Also... Another thing that I just happened to come across, 
and I'm a little sad we didn't include in our NIL episode the 25-year-old uh, quarterback Stetson Bennett IV from University of Georgia. He recently appeared in an AARP commercial uh, highlighting the fact that he is, you know, older than his typical teammate. Another reason we see some older athletes in college sports is because they tried a different sport first and had a little bit of a change of direction. One example there is Zach von Rosenberg. He actually played minor league baseball, um, and then he went to LSU for football when he was 26, and he played until he was 30 at LSU. He was their starting punter, two-time All-SEC second team, and of course he was part of their national championship in 2019. Punter and kicker positions definitely seem to be ones that are a little bit more viable for older players. I looked into another player, James Stefano, and he was an Australian soccer player. He was on the U19 Australian soccer team um, and then played some professional soccer, but was not quite working out for him. He was also working in real estate, and he figured out he was going to switch over and try kicking for American football instead, and he attended the University of Colorado Boulder He was playing for them in 2019 and 20. He was 33 years old, and he did quite well. He ranks fourth all-time for Colorado kickers, and he was seriously wanting to play in the NFL. Um, He mentioned that in interviews, but ended up retiring early due to some injuries and didn't quite finish out his college career. When I was reading about Stefano, I learned that he worked out at Pro Kick in Australia, which helps many Australians who maybe didn't grow up playing or even knowing much about American football transition to that sport and then helps them get to teams in the United States. And they've been crazy successful. There's an award called the Ray Guy Award that's given to the best punter in college football every year. And Australians who had been through pro kick dominated that award and won five in a row from 2013 to 2018. And if you're interested in, you know, seeing a pro kick punter in action, there's actually um, a current pro kick alum, Tom Hutton, uh, who is playing for Oklahoma State this fall at age 32. And 2022 should be his final year at Oklahoma State. If you're wondering who the current oldest player in college football is, that would be Ray Russell. He plays for North Dakota State College of Science, and he is 49 years old. That is a good few years on Tom Brady. He had 17 years in the military between when he played high school football in 1992 and when he returned to the field. And that is another common reason why we'll see older players in college sports. The NCAA has typically been very flexible about granting exceptions for people who served in the military. The oldest ever Division I college football player was a 55-year-old, and that's Joe Thomas Sr. He played at South Carolina State, and he actually went back to school with his son, Joe Thomas Jr., who has since gone on to play for the Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers in the NFL. And it's actually a pretty kind of heartbreaking story with a happy ending where he had played and and done well in football in high school, but because of a speech impediment and being partially deaf, he basically lacked the confidence to go on and play in college. He had his hearing restored when he was 17 years old, From the reporting that I saw, it turns out that they had actually just been clogged with dirt from working on farms in his childhood, and once they were cleaned out, his hearing returned. And then when Joe Sr.'s construction business was struggling during the 2008 recession and his son was getting ready to go play college football, he kind of said, hey, I have this opportunity to kind of reshape my own life, and He actually ended up getting a degree in engineering. He was there for four years, and although an injury kept him from playing um, with his son while they were both there, he did eventually get into a game on senior day, and he was able to rush for three yards. 
There were other sort of feel-good stories, especially at the Division two and three levels of college athletes in their 50s, even 60s and 70s. But when I started looking into them, I often found evidence that their presence was more of a novelty or more about filling a personal dream and less about really contributing to the team. Several of the people who competed in their older years uh, quickly pivoted to selling books and doing motivational speaking about their experience. I did find a quote from a coach who had a 39-year-old uh, football player on his team, and he said that when he put him in for two minutes and made him an official player, it was a, quote, reward for off-season work and good attitude. And I think that that was sort of often the case with these older athletes. I found one really amusing story about the oldest college basketball player who was 73, but ended up being ruled academically ineligible. He failed a Spanish class and the team had to forfeit the game he contributed to in which he had scored two points via free throws. But of course, I don't want to throw everyone in the same bucket and say that the oldest athletes didn't bring anything to the table. I also found an incredible story about the oldest baseball player, John Wilson. Uh, He was at Penn State Altoona when he was 53 years old. He only had a handful of at-bats, but over his four years there, he was able to contribute to the team in other ways, like coaching first base and throwing a lot of batting practice. And since his time in college, he has moved on to working as an assistant for the Altoona Curve baseball team. And just one more super fun fact about that story is that he happened to be a personal friend of Dusty Baker, the manager of the Houston Astros, and Dusty helped him pay for his freshman year of college so he could get the chance to live his dreams. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini solo episode. If you would like to give us any notes or feedback, you can always reach out at podcast at sportsreference.com. Thanks for listening.